Welcome back, Aluxers. As if 2020 didn't have enough shit, these companies piled it on even further by making some pretty serious blunders this year. Today, we highlight just 10 faux pas from businesses and companies that didn't quite think things through and how their mistakes led to criticism and embarrassment. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Here we go. Number 1. Tutoroo Tutoroo is a tutoring website based in Singapore. The site gives people the opportunity to connect with tutors in their city or online to learn another language. So how did this company make a serious blunder? They released an advert promoting their online tutoring services. Doesn't sound bad, does it? Except they featured a British man trying to get the phone number for a Chinese lady. When she gives him the number, she says, sex, 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 free sex tonight. He's confused and she punches the numbers into the phone, 666-3629. They received a lot of backlash for stereotyping the Asian accent, and despite the backlash, they refused to apologize or remove the advert. Number 2. Uber Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash spent a whopping $200 million to endorse and get people to vote in favor of Proposition 22, which would exempt drivers from the state law requiring them to be considered as employees. 58% of people voted in favor of Proposition 22, but while trying to get that majority yes vote, Uber sent push notifications to passengers, which they had to read and confirm before they could order their ride. The message read, Say yes on Prop 22, will you? This ad is paid for by Uber Technologies, Inc. The message also said if passengers don't vote yes, they would increase wait times and prices would rise. Passengers were less than impressed with the aggressive nature of the communication and pointed out it broke Apple App Store rules. Number 3. Burger King Veganuary is a nonprofit organization in the UK that promotes veganism and aims to get people to follow a vegan lifestyle. They've dubbed January Veganuary to encourage others to follow a vegan lifestyle for just a month. Great idea, and Burger King hopped on board with their plant-based burger. One problem, they were grilling the patties on the same grill they were using for their meat patties. To add insult to injury, the burgers were served with mayonnaise containing eggs. A spokesperson for the Vegan Society called the launch a, quote, missed opportunity. Number 4. Sports Direct so while the world was shutting up shop, Sports Direct boss Mike Ashley deemed his stores to be an essential service. His reasoning was that while people couldn't get to gyms, they could at least train at home. This would have put his own staff on the front line and public and staff were quick to call him out for it. He has since apologized, saying his decision was ill-judged and poorly timed and said he would learn from his mistakes. He continued by saying, I'm deeply apologetic about the misunderstandings of the last few days. We will learn from this and try not to make the same mistakes in the future. Unfortunately, recent reports have highlighted that Sports Direct Warehouse doesn't have hand sanitizing stations, masks, or gloves available for their staff. However, Fraser's group said they did go and investigate the allegations at the Shirebrook site, and all was in accordance with government regulations. So, who's fooling who? Number 5. Diamond Mist it's not uncommon to have a celebrity endorse a product, but you certainly pay for the service. So what's the next best thing? Diamond Mist, suppliers of e-liquids, e-cigarettes, and similar products, decided to use a celebrity look-alike and pretend the actual celeb endorsed their products. The vaping company released a series of adverts using a Mo Farah lookalike with the slogan, Mo's Mad for Menthol, and it wasn't long before the real Mo Farah found out. He took to Twitter to reassure his fans he was in no way in partnership with the brand and was suing the brand for using a lookalike and his name. The Advertising Standards Authority banned the advert. It probably would have cost Diamond Mist less if they had just approached Mo Farah and asked him to be their brand ambassador from the get-go. Number 6. Richard's Group 
founder of the Dallas-based advertising company The Richards Group, resigned in 2020 after he made some racist remarks. The firm is the largest independently owned advertising agency in the country and are known for creating the famous slogan, We'll Leave the Light On For You, from Motel 6 in 1986. So, back to the racist remarks. Founder Stan Richards claimed that a personal advert for Motel 6 was too black for the white supremacist constituents of the hotel's chain. Several groups cut ties with the company, including Keurig, Dr. Pepper, HEB, Cracker Barrel, Home Depot, and the Salvation Army. Since then, the company sent out a statement saying the following. Our brand has been tarnished. We understand and regret the pain and concerns of all those who were deeply troubled by the words our founder spoke. In Richard's statement, he added, If this was a publicly held company, I'd be fired for the comments I made. But we are not public, so I'm firing myself. The Richards Group has since implemented six diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, as well as bias training for all employees, and a promise to keep track of their progress and efforts. Number 7. Boeing It was a rough start for Boeing in 2020 as they were still dealing with the 737 MAX crisis of 2019. The craft was said to have more fuel-efficient engines, a longer range, cheaper operating costs, updated avionics, cabins, and similar insides, so pilots could easily adjust to the new craft. On October 29, 2019, a MAX plane, Lion Air Flight 610, took off from Jakarta. On the plane's previous trip, it had given the wrong speed and altitude readings but was deemed ready to fly despite that. Twelve minutes later, the plane crashed into the Java Sea. 189 people died. Fast forward a few months and the same things happened to Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. All 157 people on board were killed. The company denied any safety concerns. Internal emails were revealed to show that executives mocked their regulator and joked about safety. And in their annual reputation report for 2020, they scored a minus 71, where zero is neutral. Only in June of 2020 did the head of the Federal Aviation Administration, Steve Dixon, admit that mistakes were made in developing the 737 MAX jet. Number 8. Weather Spoons it was a PR nightmare for Weatherspoons when their chairman, Tim Martin, managed to say the wrong thing several times. We can't deny that COVID has caused a lot of uncertainty and anxiety, but when you tell your 43,000 employees they're not going to get any payment until the government's furlough scheme began, in other words, they'll have zero income for about two months, that's pretty heartless. He also insisted that his bars stay open during the crisis, really not giving a shit about his staff's safety and then saying if they weren't happy with the situation, they could just go work at Tesco's. It certainly leaves a bitter taste in your mouth, unlike their signature baked potatoes. Number 9. McDonald's Waste of time and disappointing were words used to describe this fail by McDonald's in the beginning of 2020. McDonald's offered customers a free breakfast McMuffin if they visited participating restaurants before 11 a.m. Somehow, they encountered a technical glitch and the customers couldn't get their promised free meal because the app code wouldn't register. What aggravated the situation even more was the lack of apology from the chain. And Aluxers, we've saved the best, or should we say the worst, for last. Number 10. Oh, Polly. What was meant to be a good deed turned sour for fashion brand Opali. To show appreciation for NHS frontline workers, they ran a competition for them with the first prize being a care package, a new outfit, and an invite to a virtual party. A Glasgow nurse won the prize but couldn't attend the virtual event because she was working a 12-hour shift. Oh, Polly then told her that because she couldn't attend the event, she couldn't claim the prize. Ouch, talk about a great idea totally backfiring. They did apologize, but at that point, the damage was already done. So, Aluxers, which of these business mistakes do you find the most offensive? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. And of course, since you stuck with us until the end, we've got your bonus for you. In South Africa, Donovan Tooth, director of Panda Clothing, went on a rant on social media, body shaming women. 
He compared two photographs of women in different sizes and said, here you have two models, one who looks athletic, built well, sexy, and then you've got another one that is overweight and represents anything but being healthy, lean and having a slim body. The brand and the shareholders have disassociated themselves with Tooth's comments and issued an apology to all women. Their apology was accepted, but the weak apology issued by Tooth himself was understandably not. Thanks for watching, Aluxers. We always appreciate you liking our videos, and don't forget to subscribe for more daily content.